Leo, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you. No particular subject, we're going to do my version of a Celtic cross. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your uh, fifth house, this could be for you. You know the drill. Thank you for all the support. However it comes, very much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Crosswatch is your bottom welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information's in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Um, I believe there might be one, possibly two spaces for private reads left on Monday. Um, I don't think there's much more than that until I take a break. Uh, if you want in, get in quick. Okay, so Leo, let's do one more. What is going on? We have the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is having you assess what's no longer working. And the Eight of Cups is always tends to be about leaving something behind to go reach that Ninth Cup, that wish, wish fulfillment. Um, but yeah, so Saturn. So where is Saturn then? Saturn will be in your eighth house. Codependencies, shared resources, in intensity, death, sex, taxes. Crossing you. Root of the matter. Recent past. what you want, what's coming in, ooh, lovely, how you see yourself, how others see you, advice, and potential outcome. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So we've got the Five of Cups, the Five of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the King of Cups. Right, What what's going on here? There's, there's this... There's, a, there's an intensity between possibly you and another person, but there seems to be a blockage, whether it's like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like um, ships passing in the night. It's like something never quite aligns. Um, one step forward, two steps back. I don't know what this is. This could be, um, you're stepping into a lot of wonderful energies here. You could have had a bit of a tumultuous time of it um, just recently with the, um, I don't know, we've, we've kind of got, I'm jumping ahead. So we've got Saturn in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces with the Eight of Cups. How others see you is uh, the death card. Now, death card is Pluto. So uh, when Pluto and Saturn are in your, in your energy field in a reading, you know, they can, they can be very, tough energies, um, especially if, if there's been in your chart recently, maybe a square or anything like that. Um, but you, you're leaving behind like a, a heavy cycle of maybe uh, lessons, losses, uh, purging, whether that's through circumstances in your life, whether it's through other people. Uh, you might have felt like opportunities were curved, you know, curbed, you're running into a brick wall, you felt like they were blocked. Whatever this is, is 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 all aligning there's there's a couple of different stories going on here there's there's an intensity between you and another person without question um and i don't know whether it's just bad timing or it, I, I literally see like you know passion ships it's like the timing's just not right it will be one day but not quite yet so we've got the ace of cups crossing you is strength this is you guys so what's crossing you is yourself at the moment. Um, root of the matter is the Ace of Wands. 
The Ace of Wands is a spark, it's a creativity. If this isn't anything to do with a, a connection, this could be like an idea uh, that you want to get going. Uh, you might like have just had a lot of blocks with that Saturn energy I've just spoke of. Who knows? Um, for others of you, there's, there's, a, there's a, a very strong divine connection here. In the recent past, we have the Knight of Swords. Now, the Knight of Swords can be an energy of, of avoidance, possibly. Um, Knight of Swords, is, there's a little energy of recklessness or, or maybe um, a feeling of intensity. Because, I mean, this is strong energy. Ace of Wands and Strength. If if you would if you would if you were to move this towards a a, a a sexual aspect of things, especially with Saturn in, in your eighth house, this is this is a, an overwhelming energy of lust. Um, it, it doesn't have to be, but there's a, it seems to be a strong energetic magnetism that's going on here. But that could have the intensity could have maybe pushed something away, whether that's you, whether that's another person, whatever it is. Uh, for those of you that um, this is nothing to do with another person, this is just all this bubbling energy of creativity trying to get out, but then you're running into Saturn and um, it's, it feels like it's just like, ooh, I want to get going. What you want is the Six of Swords. Six of Swords is Mercury in Aquarius, so the magician meets the star card. You want that um, soul alignment to be able to, as above, so below, draw in whatever it is that you need and want. You can do this because what's coming in is the sun. Two cards that represent Leo in the uh, Major Arcana and then both here, the sun and the strength card. You're in, a, you're in deep alignment with your soul and your purpose here. Whatever you've done to heal whatever needs to heal is, um, is has been quite significant. How you see yourself is the Page of Swords. The Page of Swords is somebody that's very, very inquisitive uh, but I kind of feel like you've maybe got your eye on somebody here or you're watching somebody. Um, it's also, I almost feel like you you don't think enough of yourself, which is quite strange to say to Leo, because normally you're pretty damn confident. Um, but maybe maybe whatever this is, maybe has, has lowered your confidence a little bit, you know, because we're almost looking like we've gone backwards here with the Knight of Swords to the Page of Swords. How others see you, like I say, is death. You've gone through a major transformation. You know, Pluto, it doesn't do things by half. Uh, you've gone through towers because Five of Cups is Mars in Scorpio, so it's the tower meets the death card. Um, you've gone through it. There's no two ways about that. Your advice is confidence is the key to success. The Six of Wands, another Leo card, Jupiter meets strength. So in crossing position is strength. You might be feeling like you've lost a bit of strength, and it's, for me, the Wheel of Fortune, Jupiter is just suggesting it's either not the right time, something is aligning, wait for the conjunction, because we do have the star card here in a second. Jupiter and, and, uh, and Uranus, uh, Uranus are conjuncting in uh, Taurus next month, or this month I'm reading for, April. Big, big shifts are taking place. Your outcome is incredible. We have the lovers, we have the star card, and we have the moon. We've got all three celestial bodies here. This is an incredible energy of alignment, an incredible energy of hope, of faith, of trust, of divine connections, of balance, of healing. Uh, you could be healing some sort of self-sabotage aspect because if, if we read it as like star and moon, um, Moon in Aquarius is the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords is that self-sabotage, um, maybe self-undoing, or it could just be recognising where we've, um, you know, not opened our hearts. The moonology of the um, moon in Aquarius is bring love into the situation. It's also saying, show the world the real you. Where have you kind of kept yourself hidden, possibly? But interestingly, with the lovers and the star card, it feels like it, it, it's like to ships passing in the night it's like you can't quite catch a break in terms of timing and it's it's because the time is not there the, the the advice is you know this strength card in reverse will turn upright when when the wheel of fortune happens when jupiter happens interesting but yeah i do enjoy this uh this lover's star and the moon this is this is a lot of this is a this is a compatible energy that's very healing uh, and very you know 
There might be a little a bit of illusions and fear that's taking place with the moon here. Interesting. It's reminding me of, um, oh, I don't know who said it, um, but it's when, when two minds click and two souls connect and two bodies fit, there is nothing left for the heart to do but fall. And that's kind of what's taking place here. So whether that's a, a connection in your environment, whether that's um, an opportunity, you know, um, the heart can fall in love with a with a with a hab with a hobby with a passion. Interesting. So we are going to look for. I want to see where Jupiter is, and the Tower. I want to see where that Five of Cups energy is. Okay, Leo. Wheel of Fortune is with the world and the Three of Pentacles. Now, the world is Saturn. So Saturn in Pisces is really sort of aligning something here with, with Jupiter. And this Three of Pentacles energy is, is my sort of, at the moment anyway, it's the connection to the norms. The norms are the threads of fate. Something is very fated in your life at the moment. Empress and Judgment and the Magician, wow. And the Two of Swords. Two of Swords is Libra, uh, Moon in Libra, which is the eclipse that's coming up next week. Big significant shifts. Where's the tower? Tower is with temperance and the four of pentacles. Temperance, uh, so the tower meets the sun, meets the devil, meets temperance. When we look at the four of pentacles being sun in Capricorn. There's a significant shift that's coming to shake up anything that needs to be shaken up. Breaking any uh, toxic ties. So we, we break through this, whatever this toxic energy is. I mean, it's the only um, um, pentacle here or ring here that's uh, broken. And then that leaves the three representing the norms, the threads of fate. So it's like something toxic has to break. The high priestess is with the chariot. High priestess and the chariot is my little nod for um, counterintuitive measures. We let go for something to return if it's meant to, if it's not. It's, it's counterintuitive to let something go for it to return. Uh, however, boiling water freezes faster than, you know, ordinary water. So there is a, a, a suggestion here to just surrender. Queen of Cups, bottom of the deck. There's a lot of wonderful things that are taking place here. There is an alignment, the Magician. Yeah, I need to remind myself where the Magician was. He was in that bundle, wasn't he? what you want is that manifestation okay whatever you've manifested especially if it links back to um last october it's like the sound is heard it's time for the call um okay i'm ready when you are is what i just heard then so uh, if that's a person fantastic if that's um the universe saying to you whatever this creative venture is um the un i'm ready when you are lovely in your extended, let's look at what this lover's star and the moon is. Let's set the energy of this uh, uh, this coming together of, uh, of, of two souls here. Um, we'll see what we know, what we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if this resonates. Saturn in Pisces, Leo. Uh, Mercury in Aquarius, Leo. Scorpio, Jupiter in Leo. Gemini, Aquarius, Cancer, Pisces. Mars in Scorpio, Venus in Aquarius, Moon in Sagittarius, Saturn in Sagittarius, Mars in Leo, Mercury in Taurus, Aries, Mercury, uh, Mars in Pisces, and Ju Jupiter in Libra. Cups, wands, swords. No. Any pentacles? Pentacles, yeah. Everyone's here. Those of you who stand out. Take care. See you soon. Bye.